Hello, and welcome to Growing Up Gaming, that show on YouTube where I talk way too long about obscure video games. In my previous two videos, I spotlighted Santa Monica by Night and Taxi by Night, but I think every game in this game jam deserves a spotlight because they're all amazing in their own right. Because the fact that they were made in 7 days is on its own impressive as heck, so join me as I look at the remaining 26 game jam entries. Let's get into it. Courtesy of inviting you in. Bad Sex and Coffee. Made by Jade AD, Bad Sex and Coffee is a dating simulator. The player is thrown into the shoes of the self named protagonist and has to navigate the protagonist's everyday vampire life. The goal of the game is to choose a romance option between a perky vampire hunter who attempts to kill the protag multiple times and another fellow vampire who lives at the same vampire only apartment building as the protagonist. I'm gonna have to be honest here, this game bored me. A lot. But then it got really interesting towards the end and when the credits rolled, I was actually left with a good feeling. Plot starts out really slow, but about 20 minutes into this 30 minute game it starts to really pick up and presents the player with some interesting problems and choices. Yeah, I didn't think I was gonna enjoy a visual novel dating sim much, but here we are. Next! Bizarre Evolution. Developed by Mikhail? Mikhail? Michael. Mikael Brito with art from Mani Mariana Mariana Asi Asi. I'm sorry. Bizarre Evolution is like Aga Io, except that you. I don't actually really know. The description says that the game is about being a vampire cell that infects other cells, and that you're supposed to attack the big ones, but also watch out because they attack back. But I had an extremely hard time figuring out what to do and the lack of audible and animated feedback to my and my enemy's action made it extremely hard to tell what was going on half the time. But I do really dig the art style though. And maybe down the line this could be a cool waste 5 minutes phone game if the formula was approved upon but hey, I'm criticizing a game that was made in 7 days which in itself is really fucking impressive so good job in getting something that is actually somewhat functional developed in that short of a time span. Next. Blade the Vampire Therapist Made by Leon, Blade the Vampire Therapist answers the age-old question. What would happen if Blade the Vampire Slayer decided that his slaying days was behind him and tried to reform vampires through therapy instead of through murder? The game itself is mostly a proof of concept. While the pixel art and animation is great, there isn't much in the way of gameplay. You can make Blade interact with the window which will make Blade's next client, a vampire in bad form, crash into the window and plummet to his death. And interacting with this scene twice will make the game stuck. The way to win the game is to interact with Vlad the Dracul's plaque, which will inform the player that this is all the creator had time to do, and if you have any suggestions, you are free to message them. Next! Bleeding Neon Made by Eleanor Hengley, Bleeding Neon is an interactive text adventure in which the protag goes to a neon soap club to search for his sister's killers, who are vampires. It's a really cool premise, but it's also very text heavy, but cool regardless. Next! Bloody Pizza Made by Matthias and Skillo, Bloody Pizza is an impressive 3D game that puts us in the shoes of a pizza delivery boy entering a very, very, very dark house in an attempt to deliver his pizza. There is dialogue, but unfortunately, much of it flew by too fast for me to read, so aside from figuring out that I need to pick up three items to progress, I didn't really know what was going on. But from the closing screen which informs us that we delivered the pizza and have some neck pain, I think we succeeded in our quests, and that the whole thing was probably an elaborate ploy by a vampire to feed on us. The game is neat because it's a 3D game made for a game jam, but the broken text and the way too dark graphics made it hard for me to enjoy it overall. Next! Brothers Made by Ethereal, Brothers is a 1 vs 1 competitive platformer game where Killer, Vamp, Herman and Joey Herman face off against each other. It's Killer's goal to feed on humans, and it's Joey's goal to stop him from doing so. I unfortunately didn't have anyone on hand to play this against, but I will say that the sound design is excellent, and the art style is cool, and that the graphics and animation is very fluent for a 7 day game. Cool. Next. Communion. Made by Gaia Fiorenza, Communion is a text adventure about vampires trying to strike a deal. Depending on the choices you make in the game, the endings will change. In my ending, I ended up killing the vampire my vampire was trying to make a deal with, to take that power for his own, instead of sharing it. Neat. Next. Dio's Bizarre Boutique. Made by Luna from the Moon and Rumple, Dio's Bizarre Boutique is... Remember those girl games back in the day where you could dress Barbie in different outfits? Yeah, it's like that but with interestingly drawn characters from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Next. 
Escape from the Vampire's Tomb Made by Dread Roach, Escape from the Vampire's Tomb is a 16-bit-esque dungeon puzzler. As the protagonist, we wake up alone in the tomb and learn that we have been turned into a vampire. With nothing else to do, we decide to escape, which we do by solving puzzles. That plate over there needs a key, and we need to find that key. And in the next room we need to open a door, and to do that we need these vials of blood that will increase our strength, so that we can get enough strength to open the door. This game is fun! Next! Guano's Big Day With art by Ellie, Dermot and Cody, music by Zack, sound by Zack and Cody, and programming by Andy and Cody, Guano's Big Day is a colorful parkour platform where we the player control what I assume is the titular Guano as he has a big day. I think. I had a really hard time getting hang of the jumping mechanics, so I couldn't make it to the end. Well, at least not 20 minutes. It's a little too hard for my liking, but it's also very cool considering the short development time. Cool. Next. Hearts at Stake. Written and designed by Anna Webster, Maxfield Suppler, Hostile V, Jared Lord, Nessa Cannon and Roberto Guedes, with 2D art from Zoe Morgan programming by Mega Mega, and additional assistance from Kathy E. Jones. Hearts at Stake is a wonderful little dating agency simulator. Yeah, not a dating simulator, a dating agency simulator. See, in Hearts at Stake you're faced with 5 potential people and 4 locations. And it's up to you to match 2 compatible vampires and a location and send them off on a date and see what happens. Unfortunately, my game broke and I got stuck on the same couple and date location, so I can only tell you about that one. But I kinda nailed my matching, so it's all good. In my playthrough, I matched the old man, Dr. Afanasi. A mad scientist looking for a partner slash chat subject with the ageless non-binary Camden and sent them to a Denny's at 2.30am for a snack. The two of them immediately hit it off as they both hate politics. And while Camden isn't interested in sharing her own work, she is interested in hearing about Dr. Afanasi's work. But before they can get into it, they discover that a teenager is trying to summon a demon in a bathroom. Our lovely two vamps who are really into experiments decides to help out the teenager and the teenager accidentally turns themselves into a cucumber. After this, our two lovely vamps exchange phone numbers, and I'm gonna say that's a win, right? That was fun, and the music and art style is really cool. Anyways, next! It's not your fault. Written by... Surisi. Surisi. Surisi? It's not your fault is a sex story about a vampire making one of her servants who comes to her sexual urges. Next. Like Good Old Times. Made by Not Safe or Sane, Like Good Old Times is a text adventure where we, the player, step into the shoes of a vampire who is visited by another vampire. The other vampire informs us that the other clans are at war and that they need our help, which we're willing to give them for a price. And apparently that price is Vampire BDSM. So the other vampire gives us a good old BDSM session and then he tries to kill us, but we're super strong and stop him, and then my game wouldn't go any further. Next! Made by Mighty Tro, Sunday Vampire is a game that stars a blue box trying to steal some ice cream without getting fried by the sun and possibly also not getting killed by the green half-man half-box. Next! Sweet Penny Breath Made by Kathy EJ Sweet Penny Breath is a text adventure about overcoming sexual assault and coming to terms with one's gender identity all set against the backdrop of the protagonist getting embraced by a vampire. Pretty powerful stuff. Next! The Shadow over Oberbaum Bridge with art and animation by Aida, Aida, Aida the Ritter. Writing and voice acting by Roy, F Roy Fender Shilden. Coding by Bayat. I'm not, no, no, I'm not gonna try. And music by Fullboy Media. The shadow over Oberbaum Bridge sees the player step into the shoes of a centuries old vampire as he's being interviewed in his home by a young boy. The objective in this game is simple. Answer the boy's questions in a diplomatic or antagonistic manner. Meanwhile also keeping an eye on the hours left to sunrise meter. While also keeping the objective of the game in mind. Keeping the conversation running as close to sunrise as possible. And lean in as close as possible before executing a bite. Because executing a bite too early will get you the stake. And executing a bite too late will make the sunrise and the game fail. I think. Apparently the boy can also flee if you don't answer correctly. But I wasn't able to execute that or any other ending aside from being staked. But I think that has something to do with the version, as the developers have released a fixed version for the game, and I think that one might solve my issues. But I work with what I'm giving, and my version is the one that met the Vampire Jam deadline. Next! Oh wait, the game is full of voice acting and the art style is phenomenal, so yeah. Next! 
The Spooktacular Vampire Thief Developed by Birdmask Studio, the aptly named Spooktacular Vampire Thief starts the titular Vampire Thief as he must in each level get a purse to a dumbwaiter to complete the level. In the first level, we have to push this box over to a vent, then change into our bed form and then back again. Then steal a handle from this door without being spotted by the guard to get the purse to the next room. In the next room, the objective is at first glance slightly easier. The purse is on the ground and it needs to get upstairs. However, there's a guard keeping an eye on it. So what we gotta do is distract him, then face through this boarded up door, snatch the purse and get it upstairs. And that's the game. Cool little vertical slice of gameplay that gives us a feel for what the final product would look like if it was ever continued. Cool. Next. Made by, insert name on screen, turned like bloodline, starts out with a little old bang as our protagonist is turned into a vampire during a bang sesh. Apparently everyone in town has heard his sex screams because after becoming a vampire, we have to fight our way through everyone in town and escape. Graphically, this is very impressive. It's a fully rendered 3D game and gameplay is a pseudo competent beat em up game. So, nice. Next! Vampire Farmer. Made by Midget Viking, Vampire Farmer is a simple game where you, as the titular Vampire Farmer, harvest leg and arm crops and turn them into smoothies to sell to vampires as a non-violent alternative to feeding on humans. Cool. Next. Vampire Who Killed Me. Made by Elusia, Vampire Who Killed Me is a visual novel murder mystery. As a protag, you come into the vampire world when you are turned against your will. Like in many other vampire fictions, this is a crime. And so, the self-named protag goes to investigate. The gameplay consists of social stealth. Protag will walk into a situation and talk to the characters in the situation and try to trick them into revealing details and then making a call on who's guilty on whatever thing they're investigating. It's really neat actually. Anyways, next! I Dream of Vampires, Anemic, Agleam and Aroused. Made by Silent Ferret, I Dream of Vampire is a physical pen and paper RPG game, which is really neat in a video game centric game jam, but unfortunately I have neither a printer nor three friends on hand to play this with, so... Next! Vart the Vampire Made by Jordan Hahn, Vart the Vampire is a top-down race against the clock action game. You're the titular Vart the Vampire and you have to feed to save your hunger. Your hunger meter will constantly deplete and the only way to get it back up is to suck some blood. But your blood suck attack also makes you lose hunger, so you can't spam it. And some citizens will attack you and make you lose even more hunger. It's a fun little action game, but there isn't much else to it. Nice. Next! Vetri. Written, designed and programmed by Martin, with art from Struntra and Chris, and music by Ray Sean. Vetri of the love letter to the NES style of Castlevania. Its primary color pixel art and chiptunes really captures the same aesthetic that Shovel Knight and Bloodstained do. And I could see this game in its final state stand alongside those two games. The vertical slice of gameplay we are treated to walks us through the tutorial. We can use potions with A, attack with X, and do a special with S. C is our backwards power slide, and set? Well, set is everything. Set is your jump, and after defeating your boss later on, it becomes a double jump. But more importantly, set is also the power slide, and the power slide is faster than walking, and makes it harder for enemies to attack you. So, set is what you will be spamming all the time, like I did in the game. I think that's all there is to say about it. It looks and feels like other love letters to 8-bit Castlevania. Next! Vlad and John's Grand Adventure Made by Silver, with music courtesy of Dan Kurdish Music, Vlad and John's Grand Adventure is supposed to be a dungeon crawler about two knights, one vampire and one regular knight, entering a dungeon to free someone. I say supposed to be, because the combat at the moment doesn't have collision detection, so as the player we can't fight the game's enemies. However, a debug mode has been added that disables the combat allowing us to explore the pretty impressive graphic present in this game. Cool. Next. You Contain Multitudes Written by Jared Lord, You Contain Multitudes is a story about a vampire and painting with blood. Next. Witching Hour With art by Diablana and Noodles, coding by Leo Go, writing by Phil Muffin and audio by Will3, We3, W3, WLLL, W I I I. Anyways, Witching Hour is an impressive looking game jam game. It has an amazing layered art style that has so much love put into it and so many details. And the gameplay isn't bad either, at least in concept, it's a blend between a visual novel and a side scrolling action game. Like here in the first bit, we learn that Thistle and Adam are a couple, and that Thistle is a witch and that Adam is a mortal. And because it's against the rule for mortals and witches to date, Thistle's sister is gonna come and kill Adam or something. In this bit we get a few choices on what to do. 
we can stay with Adam, send him away, or run away with him. Then when Thistle goes to confront her sister, the game turns into a side scrolling action game, and on this screen, we can jump and do attacks. Like early style Castlevania games, attacking is something you commit to. The attacks have a small wind-up time, and more importantly, executing one of these attacks will launch Thistle a little backwards. So positioning Thistle correctly, and making sure that there are no enemies in range of grabbing her before executing an attack is essential. The worst thing about this is that it's short. After the sister screen, we kill some ghosts and then it's over. Okay. Next! No, actually not next. This is the end. So with that last entry, I've covered every single Vampire Jam entry. I don't know what else there is to say. If you liked any of the games I talked about, go play them. They're available on itch.io. And if there's a game you really like, you can donate to most of the creators on their submission pages. Anyways, thanks to the creators for their submissions and thanks you. And thanks you. <laughs> anyways, thanks to the, anyways, thanks to the creators for their submissions and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.